I'm going to call on Peter Martinovich now to have a few words to say. Peter, would you like to come forward? Here's your big chance. Peter's going to give us an up-to-date talk on the rail into Perth Airport. I was thinking of an up-to-the-minute talk, but it's <coughs> probably every 30 seconds it changes these days. <laughs> Peter's been a member of the club for, for years and years, a great interest in aircraft, um, and uh, he's, uh, what is he? We've already decided he's the Director of Engineering and Painting and so on uh, for the State Government. So, Peter, it's over to you, and I'll just switch over to your presentation. Uh, thanks, Brian. Um, I got my present position in the Public Transport Authority under some, um, I suppose, dubious um, circumstances. A couple of years ago, I thought I might have had enough, and so I um, uh, let that be known to those who make important decisions within government. Um, and so I've been talking about the need to have a planning division for years. And so uh, they stunned me. They said, how would you like your own planning division? And I went, yeah. Would you, can I have my own people? And they said, yeah. Can I have my own budget? I said, yeah. <laughs> and I said, um, mm, all right. And I came home and told my wife, and she said, you're a cheap tart. <laughs> <laughs> So now I've got this division going of young people, they won't let me go. So um, I'm, I'm apparently on a 24-month um, uh, rolling program, and they haven't started the 24 months yet. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll get on to this. Can I stand over there because the light's coming in? Okay, so um, a railway route to Perth Airport is a very topical subject, and um, um, uh, recently, uh, we had any manner of um, consternation when we had to actually cost not just our own option, but also another option uh, for Perth Airport. And there were some people in my group that were feeling pretty vulnerable um, because they basically had to come up with some costing of operations they weren't too sure of in a very short period of time. And I think they made a very good job of it. So we've been planning. Um, a railway to Perth Airport for the last four years. And um, the date at which these things happen um, is not within the bureaucracy. It's always the, rightful, it's always the rightful decision of government. For example, I did all the planning for the Mandurah Railway, and there was nothing in the forward estimates until six months before the decision was taken to build that railway. And what a lot of people don't know is that the actual money was granted by the court coalition government in October 2000, and 2000 when they allocated $1.2 million um, to that project. So getting on to this, um, this subject here, Perth Airport is undertaking a major reconfiguration of the whole airport, and they're going to consolidate uh, both the domestic and the international terminal in one spot at the international site. And we've been talking about public transport to the airport, and this is the opportunity to not only serve the airport, but also to um, serve the southeastern um, suburbs of Perth as well. So there is um, a submission currently by the state government to this group called Infrastructure Australia, who I'm told hasn't got the money, um, um, to pay for um, a fair portion of a railway to Perth Airport. The way this money works is that um, a lot of the eastern states get uh, most of the money, and um, we accept that we've got 10% of the population, and we might get 10% of the money if we're lucky. Um, of all the projects, I think the Premier has said that this is one of his most important projects. So, you know, there may be a, there may be a chance that we'll get something. So, um, the reason why we're, we're doing it is that it connects the CBD and the airport, and it promotes connections throughout the, um, the whole metro area. There's a segregation caused by the runways at the airport, and this actually cuts that down. There is a real opportunity to develop what we call Airport West as a true business centre, and I'll, and I'll cover that later. And of course, it reduces car dependency and all those things that 
um, equate to what people call the triple bottom line. A rail service that would go to Perth Airport that would only depend on airport traffic would not make any sense at all. The case is strengthened by a concentrated activity centre that's developed on the airport that generates significant work trips. And what I'm talking about is that the um, domestic site now, Rio <coughs> Tinto, control all their mining operations, including driving some of the locomotives, and within about three or four years' time, driving all the locomotives from Perth Airport. Um, that's, that's the sort of level of um, sophistication that's coming into our state at this time. It's an opportunity to integrate with Fremantle and the Midland services. I'm, sometimes they let me consult interstate. And there's a whole lot of pressure in Melbourne to connect Doncaster to Melbourne. The trouble is, what do you do with the train when it gets to Melbourne? And our advice has been, you either go to somewhere like Werribee, and then someone said, why don't we make a Doncaster-Melbourne railway go to Melbourne Airport? And I understand that's what they're looking at, because you can't, you can't dead-end trains in a central city area, unless you're in, unless you're in somewhere like perhaps Adelaide, uh, where they don't do things too well. Um, <laughs> somebody said to me, "If you ever, are there any people in South Australia here before I go? <laughs> somebody said, if you ever want to see anybody who makes trains operate like, like I suppose buses and uh, buses operate like trains go to Adelaide. <laughs> And there is a great ability now in Perth to actually transfer within Perth um, so that you can access virtually the whole metropolitan area. So maximising residential catchment ridership, stimulating and supporting sustainable land use planning outcomes is critical. That's not just about an airport. This is very important and this was one of the problems with Metronet. Um, and I'm not getting political here. Provision of additional infrastructure without proper consideration and appropriate response to demand pressures is fraught with danger. Why are you doing this? That's the first question you must ask. Why are you doing this? And, um, and, I, and I can say it now, one of the problems we had over a period of four years is convincing people why you didn't need a railway to Allenbrook. And when you looked at a catchment population which was 60% of the catchment population that that Murdoch station serves. And you look at spending a billion dollars, you think, wow, this is a real waste of money. So the question, what is the problem, has to be asked in formulating the response. And too many people draw lines on maps, so they are giving you the supply solution without understanding what is the demand for this. And more importantly, what is the operation that's going to make this work? <coughs> So a new service has to fit in with what you've got already. Um, and if it can't fit in, well, then don't do it. It's like trying to um, get an, uh, like uh, doubling the capacity into Perth Airport and having the single main runway there. It ain't going to work. So you've got to do something else. And experience in Perth is showing don't terminate a railway in Perth. It actually takes eight minutes to turn a train around by the time they do all the safety things. Now, now that, that is real cost of money in not only uh, rolling stock capacity, but the train's sitting there, so it's taking up space and all that sort of business. Okay, so um, a number of route options were examined over the last five years going to Perth Airport, and uh, we went everywhere, north, south, around the back of, and uh, even through Welshpool. And what we came up with, a line that goes from the middle of the line just east of Basewater, goes under Guildford Road, goes down Tonkin Highway, uh, gets into the airport estate around where the domestic terminal is, and tunnels underground um, to the consolidated terminal, and then goes further out. Brad Geaches, the boss of Perth Airport, is a mining engineer, and he was really nervous about people tunneling under his runway. <laughs> and we took, uh, we didn't understand why. And uh, it, took, uh, it took us a couple of years before we could um, assure him that, yeah, we could do it. And we told them that when we do it, just go away for the weekend. We'd go under runway 24 first, and if we worked there, we'd just continue. And we'd, we'd send him a telegram and say, we're, we're done. 
Okay, so this is the route that we've got at present. Okay, um, and basically this is on the surface. This is um, a, a railway at the domestic site. Uh, this is all underground right out to Beckenham and here is the consolidated site. So today, somebody said to me, rang me up on the way here, one of our best engineers said, Pete, what do you think about tunnelling all the way? When you look at all that trouble that's going to be caused in this section here trying to fit into the freeway and costs of things are so much now that you've got to say yep. So when Brian said things change, nothing's been built and, um, and, and so we have to look at options. And some of the blurb here is it's the fastest route connects. It basically is going to um, do all the good things, but I've got to move on. Now, when we do a project development plan or a project definition plan in Perth, we do it different to anybody else in Australia. And our record um, as regards new metro rail and as regards our current Perth City Link project attracts worldwide attention. So currently the Perth City Link project is running ahead of city. It's running ahead of schedule and it's running ahead of time. And the reason for that is that we spend an inordinate amount of time in, in the planning process. So our job is to, is to actually develop a highly developed scope of works as to what's actually going to be built. The best job that you can cost is the one you just finished. You can really tell the cost of that. Okay, how close can you come to that in your planning? And there's a case when we're sinking the railway through Perth where we go over the top of the two Fremantle lines. If you were to actually dig a hole on top of that, the whole thing would, would just pop out of the ground because it's in the water table. That, the cost of doing that bit was probably 10% of the whole project, but it was about 500% of the risk. So we spent a lot of money solving that problem before we told the government, yes, you can do it. And when we've got a good scope, that can be the basis of a good cost estimate and it reduces risk. We talk about how we might build it. We have to sell this project to the government and we have to sell it to the stakeholders and therefore we've got to be rigorous and convincing. And when the stakeholder owns your project, you don't have a problem. When we're doing the manager line, one of my one of my managers came out of a meeting with the town of Quinana and he had smoke coming out of his ears. And I said, what's wrong, guy? He said, you'd think it was their bloody station. <laughs> and I said, mate, it is. <laughs> and that's just, 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 and, uh, it, it, it's just a, an attitude you've got to develop. So we're looking at three stations. We're looking at board tunnels, boring under the, under the actual runways. We're looking at integration with the Fremantle line we're looking at bridging over the Swan River, and we're looking at uh, tunneling right out to High Wycombe. So our, our decision we've got to make in the next three weeks is this. Do we have one tunnel, or do we have two tunnels? And, and what we found in tunneling through Perth and world experience is that if you've got a tunnel, you have to be at least the diameter of the tunnel below ground. Because when you get down to that depth, what's happening on the ground doesn't matter. You're just carrying the dead load. The trouble is that the big tunnel is twice as big as the small tunnel. And therefore, it's got to be much further down, which means when you're building a station, you've got to be much deeper, and you've got all those problems. But there are pros, there, there, there are, there are pros and there are cons. So this is the, the big green machine that um, is about, 60, uh, sorry, about 25 metres long. Um, it's got its own train in it, it carries its own dirt out, and the people who live in here live in a pressurised atmosphere. And I've heard that you can get the bends in this thing. <laughs> and the reason why, um, why that happens is that this thing goes around very slowly and chews into the dirt. And it, and it pulls the dirt back and it sends it off in the train that, that, that goes behind the, uh, that, that's, that's part of this whole thing. While it's doing that, it's putting up the sides of the tunnel. In order to stop the dirt falling over from the front and the top, they pressurise the thing, so you've got a pressure pushing out. So it's uh, quite uh, complex. The Japanese are very good at this. Okay, and, and this is the scale of what we're talking about. Look at the people here, and look at the machine. 
when we did the uh, first tunnel breakthrough on the Perth City project, we came out within two centimetres of where we should be. So when you think about something that's come over two kilometres underground, it's gone up and down and round corners, and it comes out within two within two centimetres, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Mind you, we didn't believe it was going to happen, um, but we didn't tell them right until we did. <laughs> so that's what engineers do. That's what doctors do. Okay, and this is just a bit of technical details about uh, what they look like inside. Um, this is how a station might look at uh, the uh, at the terminal. With you come out of this tunnel into the station with platforms and mezzanine level, and then you go up. Um, the station that consolidated airport could be up to 20 metres deep, and we've got to find out over the next few months. So we have to complete something that says June 2013. I've now been given another few months to do that. Airport West Station is going to be, as I said, on the present domestic site. I can see Brian out of the corner of my eye, so I'm going to hurry up. Okay, it's going to be a major bus train interchange, so it's not, it's not going to support airport travel. It's going to be this new business project uh, precinct, plus the people who live in Belmont, Redcliffe, and those other areas. And this has got great support by the City of Belmont, uh, Perth Airport, the Private Limited, and the West Bay Planning Commission. The consolidated terminal is going to be purely a railway station, uh, purely a railway airport station. And two weeks ago with Perth Airport, we had a workshop and we fixed where this station is going to be. It's going to be slightly south of that main control tower, that big 70 metre control tower. What, we're, what we have to do and, and what Perth Airport are trying to do with us is they have, we're trying to find a way where the exit says train, car, taxi, everything. So you're not looking in corners to see where you're going to catch a train. It's all on a one very legible uh, pathway. Um, so uh, there's going to be a lot of work done with Perth Airport on that over the next three months. And the High Wickham station is going to be up there on Dundas Road and it'll be serving Kalamunda uh, right out to Forestfield and those areas there. Uh, and that'll be connected by a pretty uh, comprehensive bus system. What this does is it provides a new customer. It provides a new customer stream to public transport. It provides an increase in capacity between Bayswater and Subiaco, where we are really, really pressing um, right now. And so, it, if we were to put trains on there now, the capacity would be wasted between Midland and Bayswater and Subiaco and Fremantle. But if we bring a new business in from the airport and we terminate it at Subiaco and then send it back again, um, it's a win-win for us. Um, and there's a lot of development now happening around Maylands and Basewater and those places. So um, going from a probably six trains per hour to, uh, uh, to uh, 12 trains per hour will really give those people um, an incentive uh, for more uh, densification. And so that's what we're looking at. We're looking at four services now from the airport, but uh, we've recently revised it upwards to six. And that'll get onto the Midland line at Basewater and it'll go through to Subiaco. That's our current plan, or we might take it through to Fremantle. As I said earlier, we're not terminating anywhere um, in Perth. And uh, I had a friend of mine called Chris Lance and took this photograph. And, uh, and somebody said, gee, uh, look at this. Here's the manager of railway. So here's the, uh, here's the station at uh, uh, Warmbra. Uh, guy in there is Jock Henderson, my very good friend, who was one of our engineers on the new Metro Rail. And that airplane, thanks to uh, Brian Davies over there and Bill Keener, um, has been, uh, I think, made into the most capable RV in Australia, uh, Brian. Um, and my money, of course. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you.